A monkey made me cry. Okay, not exactly, but nearly, nearly cry. Actually, I did kind of have tears coming out. What am I talking about? No! Here I was being myself, being a human, and after watching the Planet of the Apes films, I no longer want to participate in in being a human. I am Bonobo. When I tell you I did not expect to get as emotionally invested as I did, <laughs> I am not lying. Coming from someone who did not give two f**ks when Harambe died. This is coming from someone who thinks monkeys are ugly as shit. I thought monkeys were ugly as hell. <laughs> Don't come for me. You know it's true. You really, you're really gonna take a look at that, at that, and tell and tell me that's pretty. Tell me that's cute, please. Please tell me that. And yet these films have changed me as a person. Let me show you how a monkey made me emotional. For the first film, I started off hyped, very hyped. I really wanted to match my background. I made it yellow to match a banana. Oh my god, it's Caesar! Already off the bat, they came out with like spears and hunting monkeys, and I was like, what the f is going on? Animal cruelty, animal rights. Animal freaking right. I spent some time thirsting over James Franco, if I'm being honest. <gasps> James! Listen, I know he's canceled, but like, please, please let me fangirl over him for this. In terms of his looks, he's genuinely my type to a T. He's just such a good looking man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many moves was that? I can show you all the moves. Okay, sorry, I'm supposed to focus on the monkey. Hate it! I'll hide it! Honestly, for this one, I did talk quite a bit during my reaction, so I will probably leave a lot of the reaction there for y'all to see. A really smart monkey. It's probably smarter than me, to be honest. Give it a Rubik's Cube, see if it can solve that. Give it a Classico Jar 10 screw, see if it can do that. You only get one shot. One shot is all I need. You only got one shot. People invest in results, not dreams. Okay. I invest in you. I invest in you, James. I'm just removing the actor from the face. The chimp's irises exhibit flecks of green. Uh, actually, we first noticed it in and chip I nine. And I don't want the what? This therapy can be used to treat a wide range of brain disorders. Can I treat my brain disorder of hating cilantro? This monkey going insane drove me insane. <laughs> As the story continued on, I genuinely got invested in Caesar, in James Franco raising him to be his own. I thought it was such a sweet storyline. There's the irises. And I don't love how this big story just starts with a man simply wanting to cure his father of Alzheimer's. I think it's so sweet. I absolutely hate this neighbor. F this guy. No! Doesn't matter with you! If I see that animal anywhere I was pissed. I don't get people sometimes. It's an animal. It's an animal. Any human attacking animals has no right to live. No, I'm kidding. But like also. Any human who's gonna do something to another animal deserves jail. How about that? How about that? I wasn't so impressed with James Franco and his love interest there. Are you cheating on me, James? I just. I, I just didn't, I didn't understand it. I don't think you had anything to the story. Oh, wow. Um, same. I wanna know, can you show me? I wanna know about the strangers like me. And then really like after that five year time jump, Caesar starts questioning himself. He starts wondering what what even am I? <laughs> you know, like he sees these animals on leashes, which he has, 
but then he also has obviously more intellect than these animals and thinks similarly on a human level so so it's confusing to him he's like but but I'm also not a human like what what am I and so I really appreciated the existential crisis that he was going through and I actually thought that that was pretty emotional as well this fucking guy right here again jail what why is he not there I don't understand there's there's cells. There's cells out there with his name on it. Yeah, he starts harassing this old man with Alzheimer's. Caesar absolutely obliterates this guy with his monkey strength, with his yolk strength, the monkey muscles. Absolute joke. You know he's a bitch. Fuck your daddy. Bitch ass hating on people. He's the worst. He's the worst kind of human. Not only does he hate animals, but he hates old people too. Like, fuck this guy. And then, you know what he does? He gets sent to jail. He gets sent to, he gets sent to monkey jail for it. I was absolutely fuming during this part. Animal control. <laughs> off. Fuck right off. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Bro, he was defending his human. He was being harassed. The old man was being harassed. <laughs> oh my god, it's Logan. This is bullshit. This is absolute bull- Harambe didn't die for that. Flashback. Coming from someone who did not give two f**ks when Harambe died. Did not give two f when Harambe died. Harambe didn't die for that! <laughs> Anybody who deserved jail, it was his mother Furby right here. Who's Logan? Come, let's do some paper. It's gonna be like, now leave your monkey here and ah, Draco! You'd be surprised how quickly I died. Well, he's probably a bitch in this movie, right? Then we get more into the lab and they're testing what James Franco has made has proven to be unsuccessful now that his dad is reverting back to having Alzheimer's. So now they want to test another version of this drug on more monkeys, specifically this ugly ass bonobo right here. He comes into play. And you know what? I, n I never liked this one. I never liked him. This is an ugly one. Tighten your mask. Me the one. He, he kind of ugly. We get more in Caesar's time while he's at this monkey jail. He meets Maurice. Maurice? Circus orangutan? My orangutan? You don't understand. <laughs> you will understand, but you don't understand. It's literally my screensaver. And I'm proud of it. More and more. Tom Felton being a deck. It's funny because I also had a crush on Draco Malfoy growing up. <laughs> I'm like, what are two of my old flames doing in this movie together? Wait till my father hears about that. Isn't that hilarious? Two of my old flames just in this movie together. like yelling outside my apartment right now <laughs> the f is going on caesar starts to assert his monkey dominance like the giga chad that he is that's this big ass gorilla buck who ends up being way more important to me than i thought he would <laughs> who i get too invested in too quickly in the meantime james franco's buddy who works in the lab with him has gotten sick and with the sickness he's trying to see this doctor and then as the nosy rat he is who shows up the bum ass neighbor what the hell are you <coughs> oh get out of here all, all up in this face this comes into play later caesar then breaks in to james franco's apartment or house it's a whole ass house Oh my god, not everybody lives in an apartment. <laughs> Only people I know. Breaks into his house, steals the new 
the new strain of formula that they're working on and gives it to the monkeys. Just, just has a parade. Whole ass shower of intelligence. <laughs> For the monkeys. I would love to be showered with intelligence. <laughs> we then get this insane scene. Oh my god. I will just let it play as it is. Take your stinking paw off me, you damn 38! No! blown away <laughs> what a moment what a moment right i love this moment the whole series is probably one of my favorite moments the way they filmed this the way that there was absolute silence after caesar spoke and and buck's face the gorilla's face and it just oh, Oh my god, what a moment! And obviously kill Tom Felton because he's an asshole. <laughs> oh, it's a shame, you're so handsome. <laughs> In the sixth movie of Harry Potter specifically. And the rest of the movie is really fun. It's super fun. I love this climax. Monkey attack! Monkey attack! I honestly, baby spoiler alert, I wish we got some more moments like this in the future films. If I'm being honest with you, like I said, Matt Reeves did direct the f out of those future films, and we do have some fantastic moments, but when it came to the monkeys wreaking havoc on the humans in particular, I don't know what, like, the way this was shot, the way that the chaos ensues here, and, you know, the usage of, of props and things nearby, like the cars and, and street thingy whatever whatever you call those things like they 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 used the space really cleverly i felt for this scene and i really wish we got a little bit more of that in the future films instead of just guns you know in number two in particular i do understand why um i'll get more on that later but but definitely i do wish we had more interesting choreography for the fights in in the future films and i really like this one in particular fighting more fighting and it's insane i'm just enjoying myself here at this point and then we get this tragic ass moment right here um <laughs> A lot. I honestly did not think I was gonna get this <laughs> so early on too to this random ass gorilla. No! 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 I, I don't know. I still, I don't know why. I got emotional. I just. <laughs> no. Help me. Help me. This one, I will say, was probably one of the most emotional I got. Yeah. I do also think maybe it's because it was the first film of the day. I did film these back to back throughout one day, so I'm wondering if that had anything to do with my emotional level to start and then how it kind of goes on in, in the rest of the film. No. It just came out of me. <laughs> it just came... And, and there it is. And I was, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. No! Oh, I thought he was going to be in the sequel. 
and then we start getting to the end there. Do away with the dick that was in charge of making this virus to begin with. <laughs> Bye. Wow. I didn't think I was going to get like that for that monkey. I do really like what they kind of do with this later. More on that later. James Franco. James Franco's like, B. Go, go be free. Go be you. Fly away. My son. No, actually, just kidding. We ended on this ass hat. This ass white. Oh, this bitch. This bitch, is it his fault that we get the f***ing apocalypse? He's a pilot? Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Did you have to? Did you have- You can call him sick, my guy. It's you! Wow, really? You just had to go. You just had to go to Shanghai. That was the first one I read. You just had to go to Athens. If he would've just stayed home, if he would've stayed his ass home, not had contact with anybody else except, I guess, his kids. Like, his family... Sorry, your family's gonna die. But then that could have been for the greater good of all mankind. If he would have just stayed home, probably given it to his family, that's it. They die, and then and then that's it. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. But no. Nope. We get a virus. That's the end of that movie. It's very bleak. And then, um, I also just didn't really understand. Yep, and there it is. Mm-hmm. Spreading, I think. Unless that's just a line. I just, I'm just confusing it. It's, it's a pretty long line. Where did he go? I was, I was getting a little impatient there. Where on the world is that? I don't know where that is. Okay, now it's spreading. <laughs> and that's movie one. Yay. On to movie two. Movie two hands down, in my humble opinion, is the best of the trilogy. Stay. Oh, God. I'd say 95% chance this was- Oh, my God. The lab technician, now known as Patient Zero, was accidentally Patient exposed Zero. to retrovirus A- <laughs> He had a name. That, that guy had a name. <laughs> Imagine starting a virus and dying and people refer to you as Patient Zero. <laughs> oh, that's so scary. Ugh. Oh, that's scary. It happens. <laughs> We had COVID! Immediately, I was impressed with the CG. Ooh, cinematography, wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Shit. Dude, already, these monkeys look 10 times better. Like, they had a glow up. <laughs> what the hell? What the damn hell? I see the hairs. I see the individual hairs. That's how HD this is. That's crazy. How did these films not once win at the Academy for CG special effects, VFX, whatever? The beginning of the second movie really starts with the monkeys. Ooh. Wow. That's impressive. And how they've progressed. And how Caesar's been f***ing. My orangutan still kicking. My orangutan. Oh, this idiot right here. Idiot number two. Idiot person number two in this franchise. This dude just shoots a monkey. Just, just shoots it right there. <laughs> what do you that for? Truly, the apes have outsmarted the humans. For, for what reason, may you ask? No reason! We then get introduced to the humans. It's pretty cool, but to be honest, I didn't really get attached to any of these people. <laughs> Gary the old man! Gary! Oh my god, I love this actor. I didn't know he was in this. Gary Oldman is nearing the age of being Gary very old man. <laughs> Would you wipe his ass? Do people have toilet paper? How advanced are the monkeys in this is my question. Like, do they still shit in the forest? Genuine question. Like, now that they can talk and ride horses and shit, are they smart enough to wipe feces? 
Genuine question. Other question, is there toilet paper? Is there toilet paper still around? Or are people just walking around with dirty assholes? The monkeys visit Gary Oldman, Gary, Gary. Hulk, you know what? That's fair. Yep, you can go do your thing, and we're just gonna keep doing our thing. And do not the rap. come back. I won't. I will not see there. I guess they need to be around where the monkeys are living, though, because that's where this power plant thing is. That they need to get working again in order to get electricity because they're they're running out. You're not back. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's terrifying. In the meantime, Bonobo here, <laughs> Koba. Fun fact, he is played by Toby, Toby Kevill, Toby Cabell. He's the one that does Koba. And I think he did an amazing job here. Oh my God, his, I'm assuming it's their voices too. They probably alter it obviously. It's his mannerisms and his speech, everything. Love it. Love his motion capture performance here. While all this human stuff is happening, this bonobo here is challenging Caesar and keeps telling him to f the humans. To f with the humans, we'll kill them all. They don't need to be here. They're, they're shit. They're shit. And I'm like, bonobo, you're actually kind of speaking facts, but. <laughs> and I do find it such good writing to make him this antagonist because his motivations and where he's coming from, you totally understand it and it's fantastic. It's just, it's perfect. Human, what? Human, what? He was the one that was the main test subject in movie number one, once Caesar was out and in monkey jail. He was the one that they were testing on a lot. Human, what? They were doing a lot of nasty things to this bonobo. So with all of that, he is pissed. <laughs> He's got a chip on his shoulder, and I totally understand it coming from that movie. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's why my coworker does that to me. True story. And then I get the monkeys spending more time with the humans as they do their human work. Damn, Caesar been f***ing. Nah, actually he only has two sons. Caesar got his dick on. This guy is annoying again with his f***ing gun. Hey! <gasps> this freaking guy again. Are you serious? Again? He's a liability at this point. Everybody's working just fine. He's the one that caused this mess in, in the first place. He caused it in the first place. Oh, You're bullshit. Get out it's your fault, dude. You're stupid. Like, I'm sorry, he is. But why are you shooting at everything? <laughs> like, I don't get it. He just shoots. He just shoots at things for no reason. And then get this epic, epic battle fight. UFC level fight. <laughs> Between Bonobo and Chimp. It's <laughs> Koba then asks for forgiveness, but we see it in his face like, mm, I don't think he's being humble here. I don't think he means it. More Ring Ting love. Oh! oh he's so cute! Oh, I love this Ring Ting. And then Bonobo keeps around with these two guys in particular until finally boom it's done it's done it's over we saw it coming avocados from mexico oh shit oh shit we knew it was gonna come this guy better die i say good one last thing. Yes, that is a quote from Forrest Gump. And then he has this grandmaster plan, which unfolds in the matter of like 10 minutes, which is pretty insane. But I love how this movie takes this turn. Like it just, 
once once this happens it's like okay shit like now we really got a movie he gets another monkey to help him burn their monkey village down and then while the humans are chilling being happy with caesar he shoots caesar No one sees him, by the way. No one sees Koba the Bonobo do this. <laughs> evil, evil monkey. And he announces to everybody, he's just like, yeah, he's dead. It's the humans, because it was with a gun. This gun's left here, and we heard the gunshot, so it's a human. <laughs> and then they go off to war. Then this is fucking war. People think, I've seen comments saying that this movie probably should have been named War of the Planet of the Apes considering what happens in the last film and honestly, I can see that. <laughs> There's more war happening here to be honest. This is insane. I'm just really immersed right here. There's some insane shots too. I loved this one shot in particular. Ooh. Ooh. I just loved it. I'm missing footage of this. I'm so sorry, but shout out to Gary Oldman staring at an iPad and having 10 times the amount of motion that that no normal human should. <laughs> but yeah, making me feel things by just staring at an iPad. I also will say I do love, and I don't know the right word for it. I want to say juxtaposition, but I, I want to say that that's the right word for it, but I'm not too sure. Of the humans using the guns and the guns being associated with the humans so much at the beginning of this film and the monkeys making sure that they, they don't carry guns because that's what they relate to the humans is, is that's their weaponry and yet by the end of the film there is Bonobo here, <laughs> Koba here, Pa calling the kettle black using guns. Bonobo just is insane. <laughs> Does a lot of insane shit. Starts killing his own when they don't abide by his orders of killing people. Like they, they just don't want to kill people, which is nice. Thank you. Thank you, monkeys. But Koba's not on that shit. <laughs> so that's crazy. <laughs> then they go take shelter in Caesar's old home, which was so cute. I recognized it from the window. I'm like, no. These are still alive, it's amazing. He has an emotional moment watching an old video of him and, and James Franco. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <gasps> Audio import source disconnected. Recording has been paused since when? Since when? We have this epic monkey battle between Koba and Caesar. Apes together, strong! <laughs> Shots are fired. Koba, Bula, and Cage. <laughs> As a monkey, that's probably one of the ultimate insults. Koba, juggle balls. <laughs> Koba, eat banana. And they hash it out. It's crazy. It's insane. The humans are having their little spat downstairs, but who cares, really? <laughs> the human race. No! Ooh! <laughs> I'm like freaking out here. Oh, 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 oh. Freaking out. Ah, ah. Freaking the f out. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my orangutan. Oh my god, oh my orangutan. And then Koba's like, Ip, no, kill, Ip. And then Caesar's like, You are no, Ip. No! Down. I thought that was crazy. To how again, like I was saying earlier, this mirrors what he did to the dude in the first film, the guy who was in charge of the company or whatever. I love how this his death mirrors that death because Kobo was responsible for killing that guy and like he fell to his death dramatically, <laughs> and then now now Kobo is falling to his death dramatically. So it's it's 
cold. It's awesome. And we're basically done. Ooh, 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 ooh. More talks between him and the human that I don't really care for. <laughs> they had a good bond, these two, but it's just, it's just not quite the same, like the Franks. I don't feel as much in this moment, but I appreciate him for being a nice human, for sure. <laughs> No kill human! Bah! Really epic, really cool. On to number three. Start number three, hot. Start it beautifully. Again, this one I barely spoke two words. Ooh, monkey killer. That's not very nice. This is filmmaking right here. Endangered species. Yes, you are. Start off immediately with monkey fire. We realize some of the gorillas are now working for the military. And we're like, what the fuck, why? Huh? And then they explain it's because they were followers of Koba. Which I find very interesting how gorillas in particular were followers of Koba. <laughs> and like all gorillas. <laughs> Because throughout this film, that's, that's all I see anyway. I don't know if there are others I, I just missed, but I only ever saw gorillas with the humans. So I was like, why is it all the gorillas were with gorillas? <laughs> so then it's pretty crazy. The monkeys are gathering. They're starting to say like, hey, let's, let's go just live in peace somewhere else. And f***ing Woody Harrelson comes in. Woody Harrelson comes in. And shoots Caesar's family dead. <laughs> I think I had a pretty civilized reaction to this. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Did he just kill his family? Did he just kill his whole family? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's insane. That's a hard open. Cornelius, you're safe now. movies it's then very bleak very very bleak caesar is on his revenge path and and a couple of his monkey brothers come with him including my orangutan my orangutan i don't want my orangutan to die then we're introduced to this little girl who doesn't talk and i was like bitch why aren't you talking <laughs> and then we find out that this is for a reason i still can't get over the cgi Oh my god, look at how real this thing looks right now. That's crazy. That's insane. That's psychotic. <laughs> Who did this? My my orangutan adopts her. It's really cute. I love it. Oh, my orangutan was keeper. We cannot take her, Maurice. No, take her. That's his pet. <laughs> I'll be your pet, Maurice. We then get this traitor gorilla here. I actually felt bad that he died, but... He's a traitor, but also he seemed like really upset about what happened because of him. I don't know. There's, there's something about these monkeys and their emotions. I just... I mean, yeah, he sold them out, but like it is his fault, but like he feels so bad about it. Then are introduced to another human, human number two, that does not speak. No speak in Americano. Papa Americano. What the hell is going on? Why aren't they speaking? What was that? Sorry, I can't hear you. And then get introduced to Bad Ape, who um, <laughs> I loved. I loved very much from the start. Ugh. Bad Ape. Please, you must take us. No, 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 no. Uh, that can stay here. That can go back in the cage. Instantly. Instantly adored. To be fair, like, do you find this one cute? Off the bat. Be honest. Be honest. And then start getting emotional over this freaking flower scene. <laughs> I like this one. Oh, I 
killing this gorilla. <laughs> Two seconds later, he dies. Oh! Do not. Do not tell me that this monkey dies. Do not tell me that. No! <laughs> already liking him then caesar gets captured and this is where i feel like the movie takes a bit of a dive i mean it was already pretty bleak to begin with and already you know not too too much was happening like the beginning there was a lot happening and then it got a bit slower when caesar was venturing with his friends and then now it like really gets kind of just tonally tonally here very bleak very very bleak and this is where I'm like, I understand and and in ways I do appreciate that they went this route, but in other senses, I kind of wish that it was something more than this plot line of breaking all the monkeys out. We just see these monkeys being tortured. They have to work extensively for this guy. So he's trying to be like, dad or what? <laughs> Can be as bald as my father, what? We get this really powerful scene with Caesar trying to save one of his fellow monkeys, and then another fellow monkey saves him, which is really sweet. We get a lot of scenes with this gorilla donkey named Donkey. I'm sorry, you ain't no donkey. You ain't friends with Shrek. And Donkey treats Caesar like shit throughout the film. More on this later. Then we get Woody Harrelson explaining his side of things. We get more into what is going on in the world. The reason those humans aren't talking is because of the virus, apparently. Like, there's been a strain to it where now it's making the humans dumber, essentially. <laughs> apparently, anyway. That's, that's what he thinks, but... They can't speak anymore because of this strain of the virus. So in Woody Harrelson's mind, he's like, if I shoot these people, then no more virus spread and we can remain being superior to you monkeys because if we all get done, then y'all are going to take over. And with that, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And I do really appreciate, again, not a straight up psychopathic villain that's just doing things for the fuck of it like he he has reasoning like you, you do understand where he's coming from the little girl visits caesar i'm scared she's gonna get caught she doesn't but she leaves her toy there and i was thinking i'm like she gonna get caught just by leaving that thing there she gonna get caught by that but it does come into play smartly later and then get very scared that rocket's gonna die oh not another sacrifice please Please, I can't take it anymore. There's already been too much death. There's been too much monkey death in this movie. Please, no. Please, 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 please. But Rocket doesn't. Thank God. Monkeys then come up with a plan to break all the other monkeys out, like the orangutan, that ape. I do love that ape in this moment. Start breaking them all out using shit. <laughs> <laughs> then the war breaks out. Then the war breaks out between the humans, and shit gets serious. Caesar looks. Caesar looks for Woody Harrelson. He's gonna kill him for what he did to his family. And then Woody Harrelson is like... <laughs> he took the little girl's doll earlier that she left in his cage, and he got the virus. He got the virus from her because she can't talk either. <sighs> At this point, he wants to die. Undetermined of why, though, because during his little backstory, too, he was saying how he had to make the tough decision to kill his son, his own son, because his son got that strain of the virus. And with that, that was bleak. And so people debate either he wanted to die because he got the virus himself and didn't want to live like that didn't want to become you know dumber or whatever or because he realized that you still are human you still are smart and have cohesive thoughts and he killed his son for no reason so he just wants to die because of that and i'm like cool and he does it and i'm like that's the great ending to this character right here <laughs> to be honest this is where I feel like doing this back to back in a day probably didn't do me any favors because I do feel like I would have gotten more emotional about this had it not been for me watching these other movies beforehand, you know? Like, already I was starting to get emotional with Caesar's family's death. That, that took a lot out of me for this film alone. 
buck I was nearly crying over <laughs> in the first film. At this point, I think I was getting emotionally spent. <laughs> I, di I did feel this moment. Donkey sees Caesar in the distance, about to blow this shit down. Blow this shit up. And then he gets shot. Caesar gets shot. And it looks like he's about to die. And this guy has his gun pointed at him and it looks like he's about to shoot him dead. And then out of the blue, Donkey blows this guy to bits. And then dies for it. I feel like not enough people talk about this. <laughs> not enough people talk about this donkey character. I loved his arc. It's probably one of my favorite arcs in this whole franchise. He started out this movie being an absolute dick. Throughout the film, we are shown him being absolutely horrendous to Caesar. But at the end of the day, when it came to the war, saw his fellow ape brethren getting obliterated, and you see it on his face, the realization of like, shit, those are my, those are my people, essentially. Those are, those are my kind. What am I doing? And I love that moment. I love that moment, and then afterwards following through with helping Caesar and dying for it, it just... It was huge to me. I loved that arc. Please comment below if you appreciated that arc. I loved it. Caesar does end up blowing up the establishment. It's crazy. It looks like the rest of the humans are about to shoot at Caesar that are left, but then we get an avalanche and the monkey survives. Without Caesar and Caesar sacrificing himself. He still had that shot, remember? He still got shot. <sighs> so he dies. Honestly, again, Forgive me for not absolutely bawling like a baby, but there was something about the way this moment was shot that it just felt so beautiful in a way that, I don't know, like I just couldn't cry because I'm like, this this is sweet. Like he fulfilled what he was supposed to do. Like he, he got all the monkeys out and saved them all and now they're at peace. It was emotional, yes. It was a sweet, sweet send off to him. I think it was perfect, but... Yeah, I didn't ball as much as I wanted to. <laughs> Again, I might have been emotionally spent as well. Who knows? But either way, he did what he he did what he needs to do, and I'm I'm proud of him. I'm proud, and I think that was the perfect way to end it. And that is how that is how I got emotional over a monkey. <laughs> Let me know all of your thoughts on this franchise. Let me know your favorite movie. Let me know your favorite ape. Let me know which parts made you emotional. What was your favorite point in the story? Uh, what was your favorite moment? Like, all the thoughts. Let me know all your thoughts. Thank you so much. Until next time. Mwah.